Hello, today we're going to be talking about the Moncrief's assignment algorithm, also known as the Hungarian algorithm. This algorithm is used to solve the assignment problem, which is finding the most cost effective way to assign workers to jobs given an n by n matrix. Let's say we are given this n by n matrix. We need to assign each worker to a job, but they all will do it for different costs, and we want to find the cheapest. In this example, it is simple and obvious. Jeff gets job 1, Clive gets job 2, and Steve gets job 3, giving us an overall cost of 3. But what happens when n is a lot bigger than 3? We can draw it on a graph. As n increases, the number of assignment combinations gets incredibly large, n factorial in fact, which makes it nearly impossible to effectively guess the solution. This is where the algorithm comes in. An assumption we make is that there is a one-to-one -one relationship between workers and jobs. The algorithm will not work if we want to assign one worker to two jobs, or vice versa. Also, all costs must be non-negative, and the matrix must be n by n. This is an explanation of the fundamentals of the algorithm on just one row. Here we have a row of three numbers, 10, 15 and 9, which we need to reduce. To reduce, we take the smallest element in that row and subtract it from itself and the rest, leaving us with this. The theory is, if a number is added or subtracted from all of the entries of any one row or column of a cost matrix, then an optimal assignment for the resulting cost matrix is also an optimal assignment for the original cost matrix. Using these fundamentals, we can now go on to the algorithm. Here we have our matrix that we want to solve. Step 1. For each row, find the lowest element and subtract it from each element in that row. We start at the top and work our way down reducing. As you can see, the smallest element is 9 in that row, so we minus this from every other element. In the next row, it's 5, and then finally 3. This is our updated matrix. Step 2. For each column, find the lowest element and subtract it from each element in that column. If the lowest value is 0, don't change that column. Here we start from the leftmost column and the smallest number is 1, so we subtract this. Then we move to the next column and subtract 6. The final column will be unchanged as the smallest number is 0. Step 3. Cross out the zeros using the minimum number of horizontal and vertical lines. There are multiple optimum ways of crossing out all the zeros, but one systematic way to do it is to cross out the line with the most zeros on first and then continue doing this until exhausted. As you can see here, we have used just two lines, but that is not enough to carry on to the next step as the clause states that the number of lines must be equal to n. Step 4. Find the smallest element that has not been crossed out and subtract it from the rest. And if an element has been crossed twice, Add the smallest element to it. In this case, the smallest number is 2, so we subtract this from the numbers not crossed and add it to the top right zero as it was crossed twice. This is the updated matrix after reduction again. Now we can start to draw the lines on again, and as you can see, we've drawn three lines, which means we can move on to pairing workers to jobs. Step 5. Start pairing workers with jobs. Start with a row with one zero and work your way from there. When we assign a job, we eliminate that row and column. We can start by pairing B to job 3, and we eliminate that row and column. This then frees up another worker to be paired, C to job 1, and then finally A to job 2. This is our final solution. Here is a harder example. We have a 5 by 5 matrix. Step 1, as before, is to reduce each row by the minimum. The first row, we're going to take away the number 36 from each element. Next row will be 9, then the next row, 24, then 14, and finally, number 4. Step 2, we're going to reduce each column by its smallest element. The first column, smallest element, is 2. The second column, smallest element, is 13. And then we're not going to change the other columns because they all have zeros in. Here is the updated matrix after column reduction. 
Our next step is to eliminate all zeros using horizontal and vertical lines. I must stress, it doesn't matter how we draw the lines, they just need to cover all zeros most efficiently. Unfortunately, the number of lines are not enough for us to start pairing, so we need to reduce again. We find the smallest number that is not crossed out and minus this from the rest of the uncrossed numbers. As annotated earlier, we see some elements are crossed twice, which means we need to add the smallest element to them. I'm now circling the elements that we need to add one to, because these have been double crossed. This is now the updated matrix after reduction. We now need to cross out the zeros again with the minimum number of horizontal and vertical lines. As the number of lines is not sufficient again, we need to reduce the matrix again, minusing 24 as that is our lowest element from all the numbers that are uncrossed and adding 24 to all the elements that are double crossed. This is the matrix after reduction, and I'm now having to cross out the zeros again with the minimum number of horizontal and vertical lines. I've just used vertical as there's a zero in every row, it does not matter. It fits the condition, and now we can start pairing workers with jobs. We can start pairing workers to jobs. We start with the row with only one zero on, and we pair this straight away. So worker B gets paired to job 4. We then cross out the row and the column and move on. This then frees up another row, meaning that we can pair worker E to job 3. Next, A can now be paired with job 1, crossing out that row and column. This then frees up worker B to be paired with job 5. And then finally, work a C to be paired with job two. If you are working on a matrix which is not n by n as mentioned earlier, for example, more workers than tasks, you can put in a placeholder or dummy task with cost zero for every worker. This allows you to complete the algorithm as usual, but one of the workers will end up being assigned to the dummy task. In that case, you say the worker is not assigned to any task. If you have more tasks than workers, then you simply add a dummy row and then one task will not be completed. If you are trying to find the maximum cost, the algorithm is the same, except you add an additional step at the start. You find the maximum number in the whole grid and subtract every element from that number. Here, the largest cost is 26, so the result will be this. Then, you simply continue the algorithm as normal. With most algorithms, the time complexity can be worked out by looking at how many times it loops and the cost of each loop. In our case, the loop consists of drawing the lines, taking n squared time, checking there is enough lines, n time, and reducing by the smallest uncovered number, n squared time. This loop will repeat a maximum of n squared times, giving us a total time complexity of n to the 4. Thanks for watching.